joining us. Let me introduce our, our next speaker, just rolling right along. Is, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, is, is John Cronin, who's the Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division of the U.S. Department of Justice. He was the Acting Assistant Attorney General from uh, July 2017, November 2017 to July 2018. And in his current role, he participates in the supervision of the criminal divisions, more than 600 attorneys. In addition, in January 2018, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions appointed John to lead the Hezbollah financing and narco-terrorism team. This was an effort to reestablish the, the legal cases and the legal effort against Hezbollah's illicit network worldwide. Obviously, uh, much of that takes place in Latin America. And to coordinate Department of Justice efforts to target and dismantle Hezbollah's support networks. Previously, John supervised the Terrorism and International Narcotics Unit of the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York and was a federal prosecutor. John graduated from Georgetown University in Yale Law School and clerked for Judges Robert A. Katzman and Barrington D. Parker on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Cir Second Circuit. John was actually in Buenos Aires not too long ago, about a month or so ago, uh, working with seven or eight countries in Latin America that got together in uh, Buenos Aires for a workshop specifically on just Hezbollah's illicit networks. That was unheard of many years ago. I mean, you might have had a panel, a discussion, a presentation on Hezbollah, but to have a, a two-day workshop just dedicated to this network with the participation of many countries in the region was unheard of, and, and I believe the Department of Justice has been very active on all this, so we're gonna hear from John uh, right now. Thank you again, John, for being with us today. Uh, please welcome me in welcoming John Cronin. Good morning, and thank you, Joseph, for that very kind introduction. But more importantly, thank you for all the tremendous work uh, that you do in support of the mission, uh, and especially for putting together this incredibly important and distinguished dialogue today. It is an honor to speak with you on behalf of the United States Department of Justice as we commemorate the horrible bombing of the EMEA Jewish Cultural Center in Buenos Aires and honor those who lost their lives on that tragic day. In 2019, the public safety threats that we face are more complex and transnational than ever. And as we all know, the threat that Hezbollah in particular continues to pose is a very real one. To be best positioned to dismantle Hezbollah's support networks and neutralize terrorist actions against US interests, it is essential that we work productively with our international partners. That is why the theme of today's conference of international cooperation and securing justice for victims is so important and timely. Prior to my current position, I supervised the National Security Unit at the Federal Prosecutor's Office in Manhattan. Time and time again, I saw that we are most effective in our fight against transnational crime when we work across borders. I prosecuted a UK-based terrorist leader who orchestrated acts of terrorism across the globe that directly impacted our country's national security. Some of the most valuable proof at trial came from searches conducted by British law enforcement and from evidence recovered in Pakistan. I prosecuted multiple international drug traffickers who were flooding our streets with poison. Our ability to neutralize and convict those traffickers was augmented by international assistance, such as judicially authorized wiretaps in foreign countries, foreign law enforcement officers who infiltrated drug organizations, and fruitful, fruitful extradition relationships. And repeatedly, US law enforcement has provided vital assistance to our foreign partners that has saved lives, whether by thwarting a terrorist plot or otherwise sharing our experience and expertise. And I continue to see the value of international cooperation in my current role. Uh, most of the criminal divisions, over 600 attorneys, are located here in DC, but many of them are stationed around the globe, including in regions where Hezbollah support network networks thrive, such as
such as the tri-border area. That international coverage is a practical necessity today. As economies become increasingly global, so too are the terrorists and criminal schemes that we target. The challenges that we in law enforcement face are to how to, how to most effectively investigate and prosecute in this changing environment. How do we build a criminal case where the evidence and witnesses are located across the globe? How can we more, more effectively and efficiently track, lure, and extradite fugitives across borders? How can we prosecute cases in the public courtroom while protecting the equities of our intelligence services? And when criminal prosecution is not viable, how can we still disrupt and neutralize threats? There may be no criminal organization for which these challenges are more prevalent and acute than Hezbollah, whose global reach and violent ideology imperil the national security of the United States and our allies. You know, to some extent, Hezbollah has avoided the global notoriety captured by the likes of Al-Qaeda and ISIS, thanks largely to sophistication and secrecy of ac its activities. But Hezbollah's ability to evade reg regular front page headlines in no way diminishes the threat the terrorist organization poses. Hezbollah, which has been designated by the Secretary of State of the Foreign Terrorist Organization since 1997, has long presented a grave threat to our national security. As E.J. Kimball mentioned, prior to 9-11, Hezbollah was responsible for more American deaths than any other foreign terrorist organization, dating back to the 1980s when Hezbollah executed multiple bombings of U.S. targets in Beirut, killing hundreds of Americans. And of course, as Senator Cruz mentioned, many of our allies have experienced Hezbollah's murderous brutality as well. Hezbollah's attack 25 years ago on the EMEA Community Center left 85 innocent people dead and hundreds injured and marked the second deadly attack by Hezbollah in Buenos Aires within a two and a half year period. As Joseph mentioned back in June, I had the privilege of participating in a multi-day workshop in Buenos Aires on disrupting Hezbollah's terrorist activities, and that was with many of our Western Hemisphere partners. It was a pretty historic uh, event. While there, um, I had the opportunity to visit the EMEA Center and saw the very moving and powerful memorial to the victims. It's fitting that just last week, coinciding with the 25th anniversary of the EMEA bombing, Argentina took the historic step of officially designating Hezbollah as a foreign terrorist organization. That designation marks the first terrorist designation, designation of Hezbollah in Latin America and sends a clear and unequivocal message that there is no ambiguity whatsoever when it comes to whether or not Hezbollah is a terrorist organization. And again, we hope that other Latin American countries will now follow Argentina's lead and join in designating Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. And still today, 25 years removed from the EMEA attacks. Hezbollah has not strayed at all from its willingness to resort to violence across the globe to achieve its aims. Iran remains the world's leading sponsor of terrorism and continues to engage in terrorism-related and destabilizing activities through Hezbollah. In its most recent country reports on terrorism issued in last September, the State Department noted that Iran and Hezbollah are emerging from the conflict in Syria emboldened with valu valuable battlefield experience that they seek to leverage across the globe. According to that report, Iran has provided hundreds of millions of dollars in support of Hezbollah and has trained thousands of Hezbollah's fighters at camps in Iran. Thanks largely to receiving such sizable financial support, Hezbollah remains one of the world's most dangerous and capable terrorist organizations having amassed a massive stockpile of weapons. And Hezbollah continues to plot terrorist attack activities across the globe. Countering Hezbollah's threat is a priority for this Department of Justice. And I want to take a few moments to speak a little bit about some of the work we are doing. As Joseph mentioned, in January of 2018, then Attorney General Jeff Sessions created the Hezbollah Financing and Narcoterrorism Team, or the HFNT, 
and asked me to lead that team. The decision to stand up the HFNT reflected a recognition of the ongoing sophisticated and global threat posed by Hezbollah to the United States, and also that this threat demands an aggressive and coordinated law enforcement response. Through the HFNT, we are vigorously embracing that coordinated and aggressive response by working to bring to justice those who provide any support to Hezbollah, financial support, manpower, weapons, or otherwise. We have adopted a multi-pronged, all of the above approach, which has entailed coordination among federal prosecutors and investigators across the country, exploration of non-terrorism charges when where appropriate to neutralize Hezbollah support, coordination among various agencies of the US government, and close collaboration with our foreign, foreign counterparts. This interagency effort has been a tremendous success. Now, obviously and unfortunately, I cannot discuss publicly the majority of the work that we have done and we are doing. But let me give just a few examples of what this work has entailed. First, we have been facilitating and ensuring coordination among the various law enforcement officers and prosecutors who are targeting Hezbollah and his support networks. Now, when multiple prosecutors in different offices across the country are looking at the same threat, there is risk that individual investigations will be siloed. But in the face of a complex and sophisticated threat like Hezbollah, prosecutors must be in sync and they must support each other's efforts. Through the HFNT, we are ensuring that that is happening. We have been meeting with prosecutors and law enforcement officers across the country to ensure that they are sharing evidence, sharing witnesses, sharing information, and that their Hezbollah-related investigations and prosecutions are being prioritized, are moving expeditiously, and are supported by sufficient resources. And our prosecutions are having a powerful impact. Just about two years ago, we in the United States received a sobering reminder of the ongoing threat that Hezbollah continues to pose when two alleged trained Hezbollah operatives on U.S. soil were arrested. In June 2017, Samar el Debeck and Ali Karani were arrested for providing material support to Hezbollah, and their alleged conduct is nothing short of bone chilling. Both defendants allegedly joined Hezbollah's External Security Organization, or ESO, which is the branch of Hezbollah responsible for planning, coordinating, and executing terrorist attacks outside of Lebanon, they allegedly received extensive military training from Hezbollah, received taskings from Hezbollah, and resided in the United States essentially to be sleeper operatives waiting for assignments from their Hezbollah handlers. Now, I'm able to go into a little bit more detail as to the conduct of Ali Karani because he was convicted after a public trial in Manhattan in May, and much of his criminal conduct was laid bare in a U.S. courtroom. Karani received over a decade of training from Hezbollah, including training in tradecraft, military tactics, and advanced weapons such as AK-47 rifles and rocket launchers. Starting in 2003, Karani began to act as a sleeper operative in the United States. At the direction of his ESO handler, Karani then naturalized in 2009 and later obtained a U.S. passport. And while on U.S. soil, Karani engaged with covert communications with his ESO handler and performed numerous taskings for Hezbollah. He conducted physical surveillance on multiple targets in New York City, including a federal office building where the FBI is located, a U.S. Army National Guard facility and an armory, and a U.S. Secret Service facility. Karani was also tasked to collect evidence on security features and layouts at airports. He provided detailed information to his ESO handler regarding specific security protocols, baggage screening, and the location of surveillance cameras, security personnel, law enforcement officers, and magnetometers at JFK Airport and at another international airport in another country. Karani's trial and his conviction on all counts left no doubt as to the gravity of the threat we'd continue to face from Hezbollah and as to Hezbollah's, Hezbollah's sophistication 
in deploying its trained operatives. Cutting off Hezbollah's financial support also has been central to our efforts. Money is the lifeblood of any terrorist organization, and Hezbollah is no different. On the prosecution side, this focus on cutting off Hezbollah's finances was reflected in our recent conviction of Kasim Tajuddin. Tajuddin, who presided over a multi-billion dollar commodities shipping empire, was sanctioned by the US Department of Treasury for being a significant financial contributor to Hezbollah. This past December, Tajuddin pled guilty to money laundering, a conspiracy in connection with his violation of those sanctions and he has agreed to forfeit to the United States govern government approximately $50 million. Through the HFNT, we also have been closely working with other agencies to ensure maximum disruption to Hezbollah's financial support networks. And probably the best example is the work being done by the Department of Treasury. The efforts of the Department of Treasury to dismantle Hezbollah's, Hezbollah's support networks have been extraordinary and historic. Since 2017, Treasury has sanctioned over 50 Hezbollah-related individuals and entities. Last year, Treasury issued more Hezbollah-related designations than in any year since the inception of its primary counterterrorism authority. These designations have a powerful impact on Hezbollah's financial support networks. A treasury designation freezes any assets of the designated person or entity that are based in the U.S. or in the possession or control of U.S. persons and generally prohibits U.S. persons from engaging in any transactions with the designated person or entity. And on top of that, the designations allow for an avenue of prosecution if the sanctions are violated. Treasury has designated various members of Hezbollah's Shura Council, including Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's highest ranking official, as well as multiple individuals who have alleged provided, allegedly provided key support to Hezbollah, including a Hezbollah financier named Mohammed Ibrahim Bazi, Hezbollah's ambassador to Iran, Abdallah Safi al Din, Adam Hussein Tabaja, a Hezbollah financier with direct ties to senior Hezbollah officials and the ESO, and Mohammed Abdallah al Amin for providing material support to Tabaja. Treasury also recently designated two Hezbollah members of Lebanese parliament for using their political office for illicit and criminal activity. And as EJ mentioned, just last week, Treasury designated another key Hezbollah leader named Salman Raouf Salman. Salman allegedly played a key prominent role in the EMEA Senate bombings. He also allegedly is a leader of Hezbollah's ESO and directs and supports terrorist activities in, Western, in the Western Hemisphere. On the same day of the Treasury designation, the U.S. Department of State announced a reward of $7 million for information leading to Salman's identification or location. And lastly, we have also been working closely with our foreign partners in our shared mission against Hezbollah. For example, the U.S. government has provided assistance to Peruvian authorities in their ongoing retrial of alleged Hezbollah operative Mohammed Hamdar. Prosecutors at the Department of Justice have developed considerable experience in national security prosecutions, and we are eager to share those experiences and assist our international partners in any way we can. In December, I had the privilege of participating in a Western Hemisphere counterterrorism ministerial on, Hez on the Hezbollah threat at the Department of State with 11 key international partners. That ministerial culminated with the release of a joint communique outlining a plan to improve cooperation in countering terrorism financing, as well as to improve law enforcement, informing, law enforcement capacity, information sharing, and border security. And last week in Argentina, our colleagues in Argentina hosted a follow-on ministerial that was attended by senior members of the administration. These ministerials have highlighted the importance of strengthening regional counterterrorism capabilities and enhancing 
cooperation. Those are things we need to be constantly thinking about. How can we work even better with our partners across the globe? How can we strengthen the capabilities of those partners? How can we collectively most powerfully combat the Hezbollah threat that we all face? As I mentioned before, much of the work that we have been doing at the Department of Justice just simply cannot be discussed at this setting. Investigations may be covert, charges may be sealed, defendants may be cooperating, Hezbollah supporters may be facing non-terrorism charges as we work to build terrorism charges. But make no mistake, destroying Hezbollah support networks and neutralizing the Hezbollah threat is a top priority for this Department of Justice and it will continue to be. Thank you very much for inviting me to join today, and I look forward to the rest of today's event.